Hello everyone and welcome to part one on my guide to making planetary pictures. Uh, for this first part we're going to be looking at the software needed to process your recordings and to refine single frame images. And you may think it's a little strange that we're going to be looking at the software first compared to the actual first step which is recording. But I think it's pretty important to understand the software you're working with before you actually record as that will give you a better idea of what you're looking for in your recording. But if you already know how the software works like PIP, Registax, and Autostacker, then you could probably just skip this video, go straight to the second part where I actually show the recordings. But if you're still completely new or have little experience with this, then let's get started. All right, so first we're going to do a basic overview of the four programs we'll use to process our image. Uh, the first one is called PIP. PIP is what we're going to use to turn this video right here, where Saturn's drifting from the left to the right. We do not want it to drift all the way across the screen. It's gonna make the stacking software have a harder time of trying to align this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this video inside PIP and it's going to stabilize that and keep it kind of in a center frame. Then after we do that we're going to open up Auto Stacker. Now the process video we're going to put in here and it's going to stack all the frames of that video and try to get us the highest quality lowest noise uh, picture possible. Then we're going to use Registax. I can't open it right now because we actually need a picture to put in there but that's going to let us bring out the detail and all the color of the picture we process in Autostacker. And finally, we're going to use paint.net. You can pretty much use any processing uh, paint program after you're done with uh, Registax. I just use paint.net because that's more familiar with. But it, like I said, it could be any program like Photoshop, GIMP, anything like that. So if you would like to do this alongside with me. I'm actually going to leave a compressed video of this Saturn recording right here in the description. Um, not the not the like actual raw video because it's 50 gigabytes, but it's going to be the same length and everything, but it's going to be shrunken down to I think about one gigabyte. And you can just follow the steps along with me at the same time. So to start, we have our video clip right here, the one I showed you earlier. What I'd like to do is after I have the recording on my computer, I'll make a new folder on the desktop. Let's just call this one Saturn. I'll put my video file in there. And the reason I do this is just so because all the software is going to make a lot of extra files and folders. So it's nice to have it organized in a easy to know place like the desktop. So now let's open up PIP. This is the first software we use. And we're going to drag our video into here. It'll show you a little preview. Don't worry about that. You can just exit that out. And since we're doing a planetary picture, there's a little option box down here for all these things. We're doing a planet, so let's do planetary. And that's actually going to do all the options for you. We actually don't have to do anything with this. We can just go straight to do processing, this little tab right here, and just start the processing. Now it's going to process all these frames, which since it's so many, it's going to take a little bit of time for me, so I will be right back with it. All right, so Pip is finished processing the video. It opened up a new folder with the new centered video. If we open it up, you can see that Saturn is now staying pretty centered in the video, which is perfect. That's exactly what we need. So we can close out PIP and we can open up Auto Stacker 3. Now, what we're going to do here is take that video we got from PIP, drag it into here. The first thing you should do is make sure that the image stabilization is on planet, dynamic background. Uh, the noise robust should be at around 5 or 6, that's the default value. And click Analyze. Now it's going to analyze all the frames and trying to find a good um, reference point to align all the pixels together. Just give a little bit of time to do its job. Alright, now that the software is done analyzing the video, we need to set alignment points. Alignment points are what's going to help the software stack all the images together. So these are a few alignment points. We need to put them on the planet, but there is a nice little feature right here called Place AP Grid. That will automatically place the alignment points on there for you. Um, I like to do alignment points around size 40, 48. Basically anything that's gonna get me around 40 to like 50 alignment points, that's usually ideal. Because if we made it a little too small, it's gonna give us 300, which is not good. But if we do a size like 104, we're gonna get like nothing out of this. So let's go back to 48 and that looks about good. So once we have those alignment points on there, we need to decide how many, uh, how much percentage of frames we want to stack. Um, because I know this video is pretty good quality, I'm gonna stack about 85% of the frames. If I knew the scene wasn't as good that night and my video was a little blurry, like the good scene came in and out, I would do a lower amount, maybe like 
20%, 30%, but then your stack is going to be a little more noisy because you have less frames to stack. But in an ideal situation where you had pretty good seeing, you can do as high as up to like 85%. Then make sure you have normalized stack and RGB align, especially RGB align. Make sure that these two are checked. And for drizzle, leave drizzle off. You don't use drizzle for, um, for planetary pictures. So now you can go ahead and stack the photo and let the software do its job. Okay, so now auto stacker is finished stacking the picture. And if we were to go back to our folder, you can already see that we have quite a bit of extra stuff in here. Now this is the folder where auto stacker did its job. And this is the stacked picture right here. It's a little blurry, but that's why we're going to use Registax to bring out the detail. So let's minimize out of all of this. And let's open up Registax real quick. Takes a couple seconds. Registax usually takes a little while to open up. Uh, one little shortcut that will happen is if you have Registax already open and Auto Stacker stacks the picture, it will usually send the picture automatically to Registax. But if you didn't have it, have it open in this case like I did, you just click on stack name options, this little button right here. Just make sure um, this is checked, open in Registax, and resend it. And now the picture is in Registax. So what we're going to do now is I like to do RGB balance first. We click this and just do auto balance. It will usually find a good um, color scheme for your planet, which it already looks better, like a lot better. Now we use these uh, sliders right here. These are the wavelets. These are what bring out the detail. Six is usually the most detailed, so we were to slide this up to pretty much the max. You can already see it looks way better. So usually I'll use sliders six, five, four, and three. I'll bring those all the way up. And you can already see it looks so much better. There is a little bit of noise, but that's what happens when you use the wavelets to bring out the detail. It also brings out the noise, but that's fine. We get to clean up that noise in a little bit. So at this point, the photo already looks pretty much done. There is one little thing though. You can see a little bit of blue like noise in the back of these rings. Now to get rid of that, I'll go to color mixing right here. I'll do create luminance from RGB. And I'll bring all these sliders all the way up. There we go, that looks great. Now we can just close that out. And I'm going to resize the image real quick. Just make it a little bit bigger. Save the image. Let me put this on the desktop. And that should be about it. We can actually close out of Registrax now. We're done with this. And we can also close out of Auto Stacker because we're done with this as well. And now we can open up Paint.net. Now let's open up the photo we just created right here. So the post process with um, paint.net or any other kind of program like this, it's really up to your discretion of what you want to do to edit the photo because it's your creative liberty. Um, for, in this case with this Saturn picture, I want to bring out the color and all the bands on Saturn because it looks a little dull. So what I'll do is I'll go to hue saturation, change the saturation value to maybe like 150. Yeah, it already looks a lot better. So if we were to go a little too high, it starts to look a little you know, too generic with the rings especially being blue, so just dial it down a little bit to about 150. Then I'll change the contrast and brightness real quick. Usually I like to bring both these values up just a little bit. Gotta find a good balance. Yeah, this looks about good right here. And then what I like to do to get rid of some of the noise is I actually won't use the reduce, reduce noise because that usually takes away a little bit of the detail. I'll actually go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'll set that value to two. Not too much, because if you do too much, it's gonna blur the entire photo out, all the, all the details, so. Two is usually enough to get quite a bit of noise out. And at this point, the photo is done. Sometimes if I wanna bring out even more color, I'll go to Vibrance and change that value up a bit, but it's the same problem as earlier. I'll make the rings blue, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. And then we can just save the picture to our desktop. Let's call it Saturn 2. And we close out of this. And this is our final picture right here. 
Now realize we got this one picture out of this long video we had right here. Let me just close this out real quick. If I were to pause this real quick. There we go. If we were to compare the two, this is how much detail you can get out of all of these frames combined. It's this beautiful picture. All right, so that's pretty much it for this first part. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll go more into the recordings during the next part, and I'll see you guys next time.